Hey guys, how's it going? It's Wednesday, and you should know what that means. If you don't, it's alright. It's Why Not Wednesday, where we jump into a game and do something that we normally wouldn't do and something that you would normally not see on YouTube, because why not? Um, today we're doing Banjo and Tooie. We're going to jump in and um, play my one of my favorite levels of any game in all time. Um, I originally was going to jump into Guitar Hero 3 Legends of Rock and show you me, like playing cult of personality on battle mode and see like how big of a win streak i can get because i'm pretty good at it um but you know my guitar broke so i can't do that so instead we're doing um witchy world one of my favorite levels of all time in any game um you should see why there's so much variety in it and all different things you can do i'm just gonna really quickly run through it because there's so much to cover in it uh, i'm not gonna cover everything just the main things that I want you guys to see. So here is the hub world, Pine Grove. Um, the actual hub world is called Isle of Hags, but there's all different areas. Like every level has like a main overworld area that you get to. See back there leads to um, a different part of the overworld. And over here you can see the entrance to Witchy World. Right there. And over here we have the Flume of Death, the first ride we can see, because obviously it's a carnival themed world um but it's out of order uh, out of order unfortunately so let's head on in and see what we got so the first thing you'll probably notice i'm going to be quiet for a second is that the soundtrack is carnival themed so that should give you a clear indication of where what we're doing here um over here are warp pads that you can use to activate or rather to go to different areas of the map but for now we're going to go ahead and go through all the areas starting with the right one this is the ticket booth by the way which has a switch back here that you can use to spring jump up here which leads to a burger switch um, which activates something I will show later on activate it like that so over here we have I don't really know what to call this because there is a space zone but this place is like a space zone as well. I mean, it has more to do with electricity, so maybe it's like an electricity zone. I don't really know. I know what all the other zones are called. This one just eludes me. And you'll see why I call it a space zone as well, because over here... If you saw that 51 up there, obviously that's like Area 51, which has to do with aliens. Oh, maybe it's... Okay, so I guess there's a space zone and there's an alien zone. This would be the alien zone, hence why these guys have alien heads on them. Um, so there's not much to this, this side, um, if you look to the left over here, that van icon in the background, that Wumba, um, the Indian woman turns you into different things at each level, and this one she turns you into a little box that can, or a little van that can deposit money to, uh, activate different rides that you would not have money for otherwise. So here's the burger stand I activated, and he gives you that burger, and he's a real dick, I don't really want to talk to him, but... He gives you that burger that he's clearly sneezing on. Let's see if we can see him sneeze on it again. There it goes. Isn't that just wonderful? He gives you that burger, and uh, it's used for a you know a sort of quest. This game doesn't really have quests, but it's used for like something to get a jiggy, which is what you use to open up new worlds. So this is like this is the space zone, but I would call it the mini game zone just because each one of these things is a different mini game. This one I'm standing on right now is sort of like uh, bumper cars. Um, I'm actually going to go in here because this is one of the coolest things in this map. It's called the Star Spinner. And this is sort of like a platforming challenge to get to the top in which a Jiggy is waiting for you. So let's see if I can't do it. So this isn't like an easy game that you would find these days. This game was actually pretty hard because if you can see, the camera is one of your worst enemies because you have to time your jumps and, you know, like right here, you can't really see where you're going to land. And then what you would do is you would climb up this thing. Oh, wow. And uh, I'm not going to do it because this is one of the hardest jumps, but up there you would find... Come on. You would find a Jiggy. So let's go ahead and head back down. Shit. Wow. That was pretty good. For my first time jumping back into this game in a while. So let's head out of this mini game zone. Up there is a um, 
Saucer of Peril minigame. If you have ever played um, Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, the Xbox 360 title, um, there would be a mission called the Saucer of Peril Returns. Uh, so that's where that's from. So this is like a Fortune Teller's Tent, not much to it. Um, it's Grunty in here, your main enemy, which I guess you don't realize it because she's appearing as a Fortune Teller. And, Fortune Taylor? <laughs> Fortune Teller. Um, and she gives you some random things. See, right now I just got extra grenade eggs. That's cool, I guess. Don't really need it. Um, let's head on over to here. Can't talk today. Um, this is the horror zone. So here we have the dive of death, which is one of my favorite parts, not just in this game, just in any game. Because, you know, in Banjo Kazooie, there's all your Banjo Tooie, there's all these different little areas and things that you have to do for jiggies, and there's so much variety, and that's one of the reasons I think I like this game so much. So let's head on up to the top here. Um, as you can tell if you listen, the music has died down to indicate that we are very high up in the air. Um, and what you gotta do basically is traverse this little thing right here and there would be a jiggy waiting here I already got it though and you can go back the way you came but of course I'm gonna do the theatric method and dive into the water so to the left over here we have like a horror show um, and to the right we have like the train station because in each level there's a train station but in the middle here we have the inferno which is the main area in this section so if you notice, in the middle here, we have like a giant towering inferno, I guess, and at the top there would be a jiggy, but you have to run up this thing really fast because you hit a switch and it, it'll go away if you take too long. And you're not fast enough by yourself, so what you have to do is run over to these split up pads here, which is new to Banjo-Tooie. Split up, just use Kazooie, the bird, and um, get those speed shoes right there, which you can obviously use to go way faster. Whoops and climb up there and get your jiggy. And over here we have Mumbo's skull which he can use to play as Mumbo and he can activate certain things in a level with his uh, witch doctor magic. Let's head out of here. Sorry for those mic hits by the way. I'm accidentally hitting it while I'm uh, scratching my face. Um, that's the horror zone. We're making good time. This is actually my second take of doing this video. The first time I was taking way too long. And here is a fries stand. Back here you can see the hidden switch that you would need to ground pound to activate. This guy is a dick as well and he gives you some disgusting soggy fries um, for another sort of quest. Like I said, it's not really a quest. but So over here we have the western zone. And if you listen... One of the things that's really amazing about Banjo and Tui is that not only is there different music for each area, but there's different music for each area within an area, and by area I mean level. So this being a level, each area, this being western, has a different sound to it, as you can hear. There's like a banjo crawl in the background, which is awesome, and in other areas there's different sounds. So this right here is the, um, I forget what it's called, it's like the cactus... Oh, there we go, the Cactus of Strength. So what you would need to do is hit this switch three times with three different methods. Um, that's one method, and the other method is to drill beak like that, and then I forget the other one. I think it's to do this. I'm not sure. Either way, you do that, and then a jiggy pops out, obviously. So up here, we have Wumba's Wigwam, which you would use to turn into a the van I was talking about in the uh, space zone. But, we don't need to do that right now, so let's head on to here, into the inflatable bouncy castle, which you need to inflate. This guy right here would be a collectible uh, Jinjo, but he's actually a Minjo, an imposter, and he wants to kill us. Oh yeah, I forgot these guys are, like, invincible. So up here you would find another Jiggy, and this is like a bouncy castle. Um, inside there's two more mini-games. Or I think one mini game. No, 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 there's two. One that you can play with Kazooie only. That's pretty much the western area. Um, is that it? I mean, of course I didn't show everything because there's so much stuff in this level, but these are the main things. Fuck you, Beehive. Whoops. Alright, the last thing I'm gonna show you is the big top. Can't miss that, right? Um,. 
what you need to do to get in here normally is to kill these douchebags that fire tickets at you or coins or whatever. Um, you can only really kill them with this, these grenade eggs. Man, the aiming in this game was so weird. And they would drop tickets and you need to get like four tickets, I believe, which you take up here. And you think, hmm, what, what kind of show is it going to be? Well, there's a boss fight in every match, or in every level, and this one is no different. You would normally fight um, patches. Let me take a look real quick and see where we are on time and see if I can't replay the patches boss battle. 11 minutes. Yeah, that's not too bad. Let's go ahead and replay the patches bosses. The, the patch... Patches Boss Battle. This game has many features to it, including multiplayer. Um, you know, games back then in the Nintendo days were, were packed with all different sorts of amazing things, and this game is no stranger to that. It has so many different things to do, but right now we're going to use the um, Boss Battle Replay feature. So these are the three save files you have up here, and then this is to copy a game file. I don't know why you would ever need to do that. This is the re replay I'm talking about. This is multiplayer. As you can see, it's a Nintendo 64, even though I'm playing it on an Xbox 360. And behind that Nintendo 64 is Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, the Xbox 360 exclusive title. So over here, you can use this to erase a game file. Um, but let's go ahead and replay. You can replay mini games, bosses, and cinemas. We're going to go to bosses. Uh, and these are all the bosses here. But we want Mr. Patch. Not Patches, Mr. Patch. So this is the cinematic that would normally play if you were doing this in the game. One of the things I love about this game is the humor. Um, you, you can't really tell just by this short cutscene, but... This game is really snarky. It makes a lot of in-jokes, not only about different stuff, but also about Rare itself and other Rare games. So this is one of the most annoying boss battles um, in any game I've ever played. This, this along with... Um, Lord Woo Woo Fak Fak, I think is his name. It's a giant anglerfish in uh, the, uh, the water level, and I absolutely hate water levels. Um, so that one's even worse than this one. But this one's an air battle, which, I mean, is almost as bad. So basically what you want to do is equip your grenade eggs, which do the most damage. Or actually, no, I think you need... Yeah, you do need grenade eggs. Oh, right, you need to um, attack him first off. So... With a guy called Mr. Patches, what do you think would be his weak spot? So in this um, level you learn air combat, and that's why the boss battle is like that. And you use these flight pads basically to fly in the air and shoot him. And it's really annoying because it's really hard to, um, to aim in this game. And I, you guys won't understand what I'm talking about unless you actually played it. So the goal is to basically shoot all of his patches. And you can see he's got like a list of how many. Right now there's eight left. And if you run into him like that, you get hit. And if you press X, you can sort of zoom to the other side. Now a little side note about this. Um, there is actually... I'm not going to get into it, it's called Stop and Swap, um, if you want to learn about that you can look it up because it's, it would take forever to explain, but one of the secret challenges for that is to get like a total time of 15 minutes or less in all the boss battles in this game, and that's very hard to do. There's a lot of different Stop and Swap challenges, but um, that was definitely the hardest, and the only way it was possible is to like exploit a few things in the different boss battles. probably hear my dog barking in the back there. Um, Jesus, Sydney, you're going to ruin the video. So let's go down here and try to shoot from the bottom. Sorry, my 
voice is cracking. I sound like a pre prepubescent girl. Um, uh, yeah, as you can see, it's already taking like two minutes, which is which is really bad. Um, I think I got this down. We'll see what time I got it down to um, later. But this is this is terrible. Like I would never be able to. Oh, see, I'm already out of grenade eggs, and I need four more hits. This is just a very hectic battle, and the worst the the worst enemy in this um this boss battle is not patches himself, but actually the freaking controls of flying. Come on. See, so you got these little punching bag things that shoot you. So you can probably tell why this would be so hard, just because you got to be like dead on accurate. And um, lots of things can affect the trajectory. And firing from all the way back here is probably a bad idea. Just because I'll never probably make one. Ugh, I hate this boss battle so much. Oh, jeez. You know what, this one's probably even harder than Lord Wu Fact Fact just because, I don't know, the, like something about being underwater is easier than this. I can't believe how bad of a, how hard of a time I'm having though. See, you gotta be like dead on with these things, it's just terrible. Two more, two more. There's one. Hell out of here, punching bag, you dick. There we go. Four minutes took way longer than I thought it was gonna be. Jeez. And that's the end of Mr. Patch. So it looks like my fastest time was a, was 1 minute 56 seconds, almost 2 minutes. Um, and I think in this one I got 4 minutes, but that's after, you know, not playing this for forever. So that's going to really cover it for this week's Why Not Wednesday, guys. I hope you like this series. Um, remember, I always appreciate your feedback, subscribes, ads, uh, or rather subscribes, favorites, um, likes. Just please remember to do that stuff. It severely helps me out. I think severely is the wrong word. Um... So thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next week on Why Not Wednesday, and just look forward to other videos I'll be uploading daily. Have a good one.